Welcome to the Lessons Learned Podcast, a podcast reflecting on the lessons we've learned and those we're still in the process of learning. I'm Komal, your host. I'm an interviewer, investor, and someone who has lived a lot of life in a short time. I built this podcast as a place for us to reflect, to be together, and to learn from one another. Let's get into it. Welcome to episode four of the Lessons Learned podcast. I am currently sitting in my hotel room in New York. It is 2 (laughs) a.m. And I have to tell you guys this story. So as many of you know, you saw me post on Instagram earlier this week that I am interviewing Michelle Obama tomorrow, Friday, October 11th at 1 p.m. And... The fact that that sentence came out of my mouth blows my mind entirely. (laughs) I am so grateful for this opportunity. I am so grateful for this validation of what can happen when we dream big, when we take consistent action over time towards our goals, and when we go all in on ourselves. This dream has been a long time coming. I planted a very important seed in Denver, Colorado in December of 2018, so almost a year ago, about 10 months ago. And I'm just going to take you guys through the story chronologically and stay with me. This is when I wish I could draw you guys a diagram of all the things, but if you listen closely, you'll be able to hear all the details and know all the things of how this all transpired and came to be. And at the outset, I just want you to know that it is definitely consistent action over time. It is a result of people believing believing in me and reminding me to keep going for my dreams and keep asking and keep being persistent. And it's also because I finally allowed myself to trust and believe in myself. And that is one of the hardest things, as many of you know who are listening to this when you hear that statement, It is one of the hardest fucking things to do. So let's go back to December 2018. I suffer from endometriosis and shortly before Mitch and I got married, I knew or I was told that I would require surgery and I decided to defer that surgery until after we got married because I had just come through a few years of a lot of health shit with my cancer diagnosis and recovery and my neurological illness and recovery and throwing a concussion in there and that recovery. And so I thought I just want to give myself some runway and bandwidth to plan and enjoy our wedding. And so I did. And so after the wedding in October 2018, I had my surgery and it was supposed to be about a six week recovery, but it turned into like an eight to 10 week recovery. So my very, very dear friend, Just Veer, uh, messaged me one day and said, Michelle Obama is on her book tour. And I had been, as an aside, I had had been avidly following online because what do I do when I'm in recovery from surgeries or anything? I creep and see what's going on in the world and live vicariously through others. And she said, do you know of anyone who could help support me to get a VIP ticket to meet her? And she sent that to me in late November and I started thinking about who it could be and I was looking at ticket prices and in major markets like Brooklyn, um, it was extremely expensive for the VIP tickets. And then one night I started perusing and I was looking in Colorado and the cost for a VIP ticket to the meet and greet with Michelle Obama in Colorado was like half the price of the meet and greet in Brooklyn which meant that as I was coming out of my recovery and looking for something to allow myself to celebrate and feel good and celebrate being on the road to health and recovery, that it could be a viable financial option for me to buy that ticket and go to Denver all for less than it would have cost to do it in any other city. And the caveat here was that Reese Witherspoon was the moderator in Denver. So I was just like, all the things are lining up. Just Vera was available. We booked all of the things and we got our butts to Denver with our meet and greet tickets. And as I said, I was just going as a celebratory trip, as a gift to myself for how hard 
the previous 10 weeks, 12 weeks had been. And it was a way to show myself uh, some self-love. I had no intention, you know, when I was leaving, I was saying to Mitch, you know, usually in these situations, I have an ask or something that I want to say to the person, but I genuinely went with the intention of just enjoying the trip and enjoying seeing Michelle Obama on stage. But the universe, God, whatever you call it, had different plans for me. And when we landed, I saw a news update that Michelle Obama and her team had just announced that she was adding additional tour stops for her book tour because she had initially done 10 cities with some standout moderators, Sarah Jessica Parker, Reese Witherspoon, Jimmy Kimmel, uh, Phoebe from Two Dope Queens. Um, And she was adding additional tour stops and she was adding Canada to that leg of the tour. And one of the stops was in Edmonton. And as soon as I read that, the seed was planted. I am originally from Grand Prairie, Alberta. Edmonton is in Alberta, which is a province in Canada. And I got it in my head that if Michelle Obama was coming to Edmonton, she needed a hometown girl to interview her. So I proceeded to spend the next 16 hours or so drafting, and I still have it in my notes on my phone, and I've read it to a couple of people over the last days, drafting the pitch that I was going to deliver to Michelle Obama in person at the meet and greet. And I had memorized it. I'd gone over it over and over again. And it was something like this. It was, Michelle, I premiered my documentary film Dream Girl at your White House, and it completely changed the trajectory of my life and my business. And through doing that, I was named to Oprah Super Soul 100 list. And from there... I, I'm losing my words right now, but uh, named Oprah Super Soul 100. And then I got very sick and I was diagnosed with cancer and recovered and had a neurological illness and recovered. And as I'm in this recovery season and I'm starting to come back to my career, it's made me very clear on what it is I'm supposed to do. And a big part of that is interviewing people I admire most. And I know you're coming to Edmonton. And I would love to interview you when you're in Edmonton. I've interviewed a number of people in the past, including Sophie Gregoire Trudeau, Canada's First Lady, uh, Rupi Kaur, the New York Times bestselling author. And I would so love if you'd consider me for Edmonton. Now, let me reverse engineer that pitch for you because a lot of intention went into the, and I didn't give you the best version of that pitch because it's 2 a.m. and my mind's trying to get this whole story out to you guys. But... The reason I pitched in that way was I started with the premiere of Dream Girl at the Obama White House. I needed to build credibility in the first two seconds because she hears a lot of people all day, every day, and I just knew I had to have a differentiator. So what is going to command attention right out of the gate? The most relevant fact that while she was her and while President Obama was in office and she was there as well, we premiered our film under their mandate. And from there sharing that I was on Super Soul 100 was another validation credibility builder. And then from there, sharing from an empathetic standpoint, my experience with cancer and with illness, knowing that those are things that she, people in her life have gone through. Because when I read the book, I read the story of her best friend and her father being hit by one, a neurological illness, the other cancer, and sharing the journey of rising and from recovery. Because as we know with any good story, when we are in someone's heart, they want the best for us. And then sharing again the credibility or telling exactly what I want, making the ask for moderating and then validating why I could moderate by showing that I had interviewed other people of high caliber, notoriety, dope human beings, and then making the ask again. So this is the same way that I write any good pitch email. It's just how compelling can I make the story and how do I add the most relevant of facts? And after I did that 40 seconds... She grabs my hands, she looks me in the eyes, and she says, this is destiny. We were talking about who should moderate these tour stops last night, and we're going to make this happen. Guys, Michelle Obama said, this is destiny to me in December of 2018. And I was floored. I It's strange, but I remember very clearly earlier in the day practicing the pitch and just sitting in my hotel room and not feeling nervous because I knew she would say yes. It was a no-brainer to me. It was a, it, it, When I pitch or when I ask for something from people, 
I do it rarely, but when I do, I make sure I do it in a way where yes is the only answer. Or I ask myself, if someone were to ask me this in this way, what would my response be? And so I'm very calculated, very methodical in how I position these things, especially in very high impact, like short period of time situations, such as a VIP meet and greet where she's meeting hundreds of people. And so for her to give me that response, it was like, okay, game is on. So she introduced me to her chief of staff, Melissa Winter, and Melissa and I chatted. I, I, she said, fill me in. What, did, what was spoken? Tell me what I need to know. Told her the pitch. She gave me her email and she said, follow up in January when I'm back. We're crazy right now, but we'll be able to get things organized in January. Now, I want to rewind a little bit, too, because there was this wonderful group of women from Utah in front of us who were together celebrating their 50th birthday because they were all turning 50 that year, been friends for years, and Jasmir and I befriended them and told them what I was there to do and what we were there to do. And what actually worked so well in our favor, too, was when they went up to Michelle Obama, they got their picture, and then Michelle was starting to talk to them to ask them about themselves. And one of the women who follows me on Instagram still and is an incredible human being and messaged right away when when this all when I got the con- confirmation a few days ago uh, commented right away on the post she looked directly at me and said Michelle we want to give our time to this young woman because you need to meet her and so that would it, it happened serendipitously it wasn't something that I necessarily asked for but they absolutely offered it when we were in line I didn't expect them to actually do it but when they did her focus was on me she knew something was coming so that primed her for that so this all takes a village like there's so many parts to this story and I don't even know how far along we are let's see we're already 10 minutes in I will accelerate the storytelling process (laughs) but I just thought details are important because this was a massive dream of mine I don't just want to tell you guys the glossed over version of this I want you to know exactly the thought process I had how I went through the various stages of this experience so that you can apply it uh, in the ways that make sense for you and the dreams that you're going to achieve. And so you can see the the kind of strategy I had in in my mind while going through this and also being very excited about all the things I'm sharing because this has been a wild ride. So the ladies opened it up for me, primed her. I did my pitch, introduced to Melissa. So Melissa tells me email in January. So the first working Monday in January, I draft my email to Melissa, reminding her who I am, linking my bio in the text or after the signature, my email signature, um, giving a list of all the interviews I had done prior to, which included the Sophie interview, a Ruby interview, and a, a few others. And she emailed me back right away once I pushed send and said, you've been on my mind this morning, which what? And she said, can I selfishly ask you to hold the date in February for the event? We have some things to firm up and we're going to be taking the list to Mrs. Obama very soon for this next leg of the tour tour. So stay tuned. Um, I was floored. It all just still felt too good to be true. I was like, this is insane. How is this happening so easily and so quickly? And I was in flow. I know that, but over the weeks that came, I didn't get a hard confirm. I still had the date marked in my calendar. I was corresponding with Melissa Probably I was following up every two weeks just to check in, just to be on the top of her inbox. So when you're trying to petition for yourself or go for something, persistent, consistent follow-up is critically important because your relevance stays top of mind for the person that you're trying to negotiate with or trying to plan something with. So you can't just send one email and expect it all to come from that. Like I've probably in this process sent about 50 emails to the various stakeholders in this in the play of things over the last 10 months so as the date approaches I just started getting this feeling in my gut I was like something's up like I don't know maybe it's not the time like they're not fully confirming I don't know what they're waiting for and then I sent an email two weeks before the event and asked again and Melissa shared that a prominent media personality had confirmed for Edmonton and another tour date and had known Mrs. Obama for a very long time, and they ha- had been interviewed by her a number of times and felt this comfort from, with this individual. And uh, the person ended up being Robin Roberts. So Melissa didn't tell me in the email, but she told me that, or the press release came out the next day and I saw it. So when she emailed me, I was obviously devastated. 
I just remember it was like three months. Like I found out in March and it was after International Women's Day, after I'd gone to India and done a lot of amazing like witness of work that's being done with young women and girls in rural and job around um, menstrual hygiene and smart classrooms and access to education. And I just was feeling this sense of massive purpose and that this interview would somehow help accelerate that massive pur- purpose. So when I heard the no, I was, I was really sad. And when I heard that it was Robin Roberts the next day, I had previously said, thank you, Melissa, for the update. Um, this is too bad. I'm very much looking forward to being there. The next day I saw it was Robin Roberts. I replied to her just saying, Robin Roberts. Um, I completely understand. Like, and, But another thing I'll add here is that when I was in Denver, I saw that at the beginning of the show uh, for the book tour, they did a portion where they did introductions of local leaders. So local leaders shared their I am becoming stories. And if you think about the logistics of the event, you have the event producer who is producing the overall experience for the audience and the flow of um, who's on stage when, what the staging is going to look like, what the set looks like. And then you have Michelle Obama and her chief of staff and their office that is coordinating the who is going to be in the conversation part of it, not the production part of it. So who's going to be interviewing? What are the questions going to be? But everything around it is done by the production company who's producing the tour. So this opening statement section wasn't being orchestrated by the direct office of Michelle Obama, but the production company. So when I found out I wasn't interviewing, I thought, you know what? It was so powerful to see and hear the stories of the people who went on stage at the top of the event Um, If I can't interview, it would be incredible to be one of those people. So in my follow up to Melissa, I asked, you know, would it be possible to be thought like included as one of the leaders on stage? And she introduced me to the production team right away and it all worked out. So that's how I got to be on stage in Edmonton while not interviewing Michelle Obama, but sharing my story to 20,000 people. And when I was thinking of what I was going to say, on stage that day I was talking to one of my best friends Julie and I said I want to plant a seed here and the seed that I was planting it was more an affirmation for myself than for anyone else and the statement that I made on stage was I'm becoming a leader this country is proud of I am becoming a leader who is well mind body and soul and I said another statement, I could pull it up on my phone, but I'm not going to right now, but it was very powerful for me. And, you know, I stated that I was a cancer survivor and like proud of it. And that's when I teared up. And it for me was just like a very powerful moment to say, hey, world, I'm here, I'm back and I'm ready for whatever is meant next for me. And I think it actually worked out perfectly because in sitting in the interviewer chair with another person, it's not about you the conversation isn't about you as the interviewer your job is to bring out the best in the person in front of you the stories that are going to most impact the room that you're in and you read the room you read the vibes you read the tone of the things that are happening in the world at that time and then you leverage the expertise knowledge life of the person in front of you to elevate the mood in the room to leave people wanting more to leave people inspired uplifted changed that's the role of an interviewer that's what I love to do. That's why I've gone all in on interviewing because there's there's nothing I'm more passionate about in the world than leveraging the stories of others to uplift more and more people. But that day, by not being in the interviewer chair, I got to stand up there and declare to 20,000 people in my home province of Alberta who I am and what I'm here to do. I'm here to become a leader this country is proud of. And so that, although I didn't sit in the interview chair, could be seen as a failure. I was devastated that didn't happen, but I asked for the next best thing. And they said yes. And that was a huge win for me. So after that event, I was very proud of myself. Robin Roberts put me up on her Instagram stories. That's what you guys see on my Instagram highlights um, that's still there. And after the event, didn't think anything of it, went on with my life, had a wonderful summer. Um, And then the end of the summer rolled around and it was 
a really interesting and critical time for me. It's when I decided to close down core space because there was just a lot of resistance. I've also realized and started to learn, and, and this will be kind of like a piece of today's lesson, is um, that when there's massive resistance and roadblocks in our lives and things become extremely exhausting in terms of we're trying different things, nothing's working, when are we going to get the breakthrough or like a moment but you get past the point where you realize there's no breakthrough that's going to come it's really important to call it and to stop doing the thing that is taking everything from you and pivot and so shutting down core space and going all in with interviewing and going all in with myself I made that call in the summer I publicly shared it in August end of August and then I started my podcast three weeks ago within about five weeks of me declaring I'm going to be an interviewer full-time and this is my job this is what I'm doing I moderate I interview I host I have secured one of the most important interviewees in the world and am having a career highlight moment already Mitch's dad said to me he's like you you declared this and now you've already got one of the most impressive interviews you could possibly have in your whole career It's like, you just got to retire. And I'm like, no, like this is just the beginning. The gift of Michelle Obama saying and her team and everything working out, which now I'm going to get into the nitty gritty of this specific, how this came to be. Um, The beauty of it is she has inadvertently validated any future guest that I want to have on this show. So for example, the, is it a president or prime minister of New Zealand? I think it's prime minister yes commonwealth the prime minister of new zealand jacinda i just am so enamored by her and love what she is doing and everything she says about economic growth being secondary to quality of life for her citizens and in terms of where people are at below the poverty line etc and i would love to interview her one day and now that i will have had the opportunity to interview michelle obama interviewing her doesn't feel that hard or impossible And so this validation is so massive in the trajectory of this show of lessons learned and anything else that's to come for me. Um, So it's such a beautiful thing to reflect on and, and that I'm just thinking about right now. So from having a painful summer to changing everything about my career and going all in with myself, saying I'm an interviewer to now having this incredible opportunity, it also shows me that when we choose the path the path of least resistance which is often the path that requires us to believe in ourselves the most and and go all in with ourselves the most which can be the hardest thing for a lot of people for a long time <laughs> things get a lot easier and that is how I'm in the season of winning is because I've doubled down and gone all in on myself so that tangent is done but now the finale which is gonna be a long finale <laughs> This is the part of the show where I ask you, our incredible listeners, to slide into my DMs and share your ideas, your stories, and your experiences with me so we can dive into our lessons learned together. This week's question was, what does it feel like for you when you win and how do you celebrate your wins? Tell me about your wins this is what everyone had to say. The first person, my win these days is simply getting clarity of what I want and not feeling guilty for that. And then expressing to others what I want and need. I can't believe how long it's taken me. Next up, leaving home, surviving secondary homelessness and living independently the past couple of years. Paving and uplifting the way for youth, women of color, and queer people of color. Representation in international and national spaces. The nonprofit board I'm on that makes things better for families of the RCMP. We're crushing it. Pinky says, to make a change I want to see in maternal health. This individual says, I know this is a different kind of win, not really business related, but selling our house. They needed to downsize, and so they finally did. And it felt hard and difficult, but they did what they had to do, and it felt like a win, this person shares. 
the founder of Be Samara shared, I started Samara a few months after my mom passed away in 2017 as a way to channel my energy and the things she embodied into something meaningful. Today, we just completed a production run of 50,000 bags and we've created vegan bags out of apple leather. This has been one of our biggest wins because two years ago, I knew nothing about starting a fashion brand and I never imagined a day like this would come. What we're going after? To create better fashion, to provide better employment, and to keep lighting up lives through the solar backpack, which I assume is their social enterprise arm. Also, they said, you're amazing and thank you for everything you stand for. You're welcome and you're amazing too. (laughs) Carly says, For about four years, she's been writing and copy editing for free and doing internships all to build up her portfolio a bit. And with so, so, so many no's and not paid jobs, she's finally scored her first paid assignment for not one but two local marketing companies. So far, she says, it's only been a contract, but that this is huge for her. She says it's a big ha to everyone who didn't understand why she was doing what she was doing. It may not be full-time work yet, But she's working on that, and she knows she'll get there eventually. Get it, Carly. Thank you guys for sliding into my DMs. Stay tuned on Instagram for your next opportunity to be featured on the show. Now let's get back into the episode. Now we're back. So how did I actually secure the Ottawa interview with Michelle Obama? So about a month ago, uh, a friend of mine, Natalie, uh, she runs Femme City Ottawa. She had me do a screening of Dream Girl earlier in the year, um, had set up a lunch for her, myself, our friend Priya, and our friend Tegan. And this was at the top end of September. And so we went for lunch. I was incredibly late, (laughs) but I sat down with the women and we all just started jamming and chatting. And by the end of the lunch or halfway through the lunch, Priya had said, the Ottawa Board of Trade is about to announce this, but I just wanted to let you guys know, Michelle Obama is coming to Ottawa next week. Or sorry, we're announcing that Michelle Obama is coming to Ottawa next week. And it's going to be incredible. We should all go together. We should enjoy this event together. And I just looked at her and I said, Priya? who's moderating she said we don't know yet and I said it's me we got to make this happen I have to be the one in that interview chair and I'm a member of the Ottawa Board of Trade I joined their gender uh, and diversity council which is going to launch soon and I'm a new member but I've done events with the Board of Trade over the last year and am a big supporter of the work that they're doing and so Priya right away and this is like a testament to women supporting women Priya looked at me, said, yes, this is going to happen, picked up the phone literally as we were leaving that lunch and called the individual at the Board of Trade who was in connection with the company that's producing Obama's tour in Canada and said, we need to put Gomel's name forward. By the end of that day, the Ottawa Board of Trade had submitted my name to the production company of the tour Um, for consideration to send to Michelle Obama's office. So this is where strategy comes in again. When you think of a national tour with an individual like Michelle Obama or Oprah or Ellen, there is a company in in Canada called Tiny Public that does incredible work um, that the first person they brought to Canada was Arnold Schwarzenegger. So the founders of this company really wanted to bring Arnold Schwarzenegger to Canada. And his team kept saying no, 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 no. And until one day they said no via email. And but there was an email signature and there was a phone number in that email signature. And the founders of this company then started following up with phone calls. And lo and behold, they brought Arnold Schwarzenegger to Canada. Thus began their business model of bringing high profile individuals to the Canadian market and going from city to city on these large stadium tours. So they brought Oprah, Ellen, Arnold, uh, Michelle Obama now. So when I'm looking at how what the mechanics are of the decision that's to be made, the Ottawa Board of Trade can lobby for someone locally, but it has to go through tiny public to be approved before it goes to Michelle Obama's office. So 
I have a con I have contacts at Michelle Obama's office and I have contacts at the Ottawa Board of Trade and so my Board of Trade contacts have put my name forth I haven't yet talked to the middle company tiny public but I emailed Melissa that night and said you guys are coming to Ottawa maybe this is the part that was destiny I am working on having my name be one of the ones submitted to you for approval stay tuned and Melissa replied back and said this is wonderful news I'll let the team know to keep an eye out so things started rolling you know two or three players are on side with me and so when I realized that day that Tiny Public was the company bringing Michelle Obama to Ottawa I went took a trip down memory lane and this is where I need you guys to rewind back to 2013 in your brains a lot of you have been following me for a long time but maybe not that long of a time So in 2013, Oprah came to Ottawa and Tiny Public was producing that event. And that's when I found out about the Arnold Arnold Schwarzenegger story because one day I was sitting in Toronto, which is where I lived at the time, and decided I'm going to find out who is bringing Oprah to Ottawa and I'm going to pitch them to let me meet her. And so I did. I researched about Tiny Public, about the founders, and I found their phone number online and I picked up the phone and cold called them. And I still have the notes in my journal, which I I showed you guys on Instagram a few weeks ago, um, of the pitch notes I made for asking that individual to let me into the meet and greet with Oprah. And I still had the phone number on my notepad. And so I, the event, they did let me in. That phone call went well. They let me in to meet Oprah. That's where I got to meet her for the first time, held her hands and said, Oprah, my name's Gomel. <laughs> I'm going to meet you many times in this life, and we're going to work together many times, and I'm just saying hello, <laughs> was at that event when I was 23 years old. And then fast forward to 2016 when I meet Oprah again in LA for the Super Soul 100 list for where Aaron and I were named for Dream Girl, and I had just been diagnosed with cancer like a couple of weeks prior, and it was a very emotional day for me, and she and I kind of beeline towards each other after the luncheon and I told her my story as we walked across the room hand in hand and I mentioned that we had previously met and and that I had said that statement to her of you know we're going to work together many times in our life and I just wanted to say hello she looks at me square in the eye and she says did you ever imagine you'd make it happen this fast and I couldn't believe first that she had such presence to be able to allow me to own that moment that she was able to reflect back to me that it was my hard work and uh, initiative that got me into that room with her that day again and allowed us to work together in that context Um, these moments wouldn't have happened without me picking up the call phone and cold cold calling and the founder of that company taking a chance on me and giving me access to purchase a ticket for that meet and greet And so I told the founder this story in an email a few weeks ago when I found out that they were the company producing with Michelle Obama. And I told him our whole story. I told him that he would have heard from me six years ago and that this is a very full circle moment. I shared with him all the interviews I'd done, the recent interviews with the first ministers of Canada that I did, and I pushed send. And he replied back right away because the thing is when you write a very compelling email in that way that is an equal parts heart strategy substance and like shows how awesome you are, people don't get a lot of emails like that. They feel compelled to respond to those kinds of emails. And especially when they ask, is this big? It takes a lot of guts and courage to make that kind of ask and people recognize that. So sincerity goes a long way when it comes to your big big asks. He replied right away and said, you know, with the moderator, we're going to go a different direction, but let's touch base next week. So obviously I'm gutted, like not gutted, but just like, okay, this isn't going to be an easy yes. I'll follow up next week. And keep in mind that like I still have the taste in my mouth of that feeling of getting told no in March of this year. And so part of me is afraid of going all in and believing this can happen because I don't want to be disappointed again. So the following week, I sent an email. It wasn't very compelling. It was just like, hey, just following up, Christian, as you suggested. Um, And that was it. I didn't end up hearing back. 
I then just proceeded to kind of let it go. I was like, okay, maybe it's not meant to be. Another week passes by and I'm sitting on a call with Kim who works with me on work stuff but is also now a very dear friend. Um, Shout outs to Kim. And we were just chatting and I was like, Kim, I have this guy's phone number from all those years ago. And at this point I hadn't pulled out my journal but while we were chatting I did and I found the notes that I made for the Oprah call and I found his phone number there. And I was like, should I just email him a follow-up? Like, or should I even follow up? She was like, call him. And I was like, okay, I'm going to call him right now. And if it wasn't for Kim and that reminder, I likely wouldn't have called him. And so I called up this individual and I caught him right after lunch. He was in Winnipeg and he said, you know, we just finished Michelle's event here in Winnipeg. And I, you know, this it's been such an incredible day I'm we're just kind of taking it easy right now and I asked him like have you guys finalized the selection for Ottawa and he said you know we have and unfortunately like it's not you I said that's totally fine because the energy I had was it's about long-term relationship building as well right like if it's not this event maybe it'll be a future one it's really great to be grateful to the people who have helped you get where you are now with which this individual is a part of that story for me so I switched gears and it was like okay well I want to just use this as an opportunity then to say thank you for even considering me and to just stay in touch for future opportunities but then he said you know what something might let's touch base next week because there is something that I think you might be interested in and fast forward to this last week when I got the and I thought there was a little bit of hope from what he said about like wait until next week so I didn't fully believe it was a no so then this last week I touched base because I had found out from a contact that the list of names for the event had actually gone to Michelle Obama's office and so when I found that out I emailed Melissa from Michelle Obama's office and said hey you might be getting some names today uh, just throw it, letting you know if if mine is one of them, I hope you'll still consider me. The next day, I receive an email back from her team that says, hey, they actually sent someone else's name and he came very highly recommended. And so they've gone a different direction. And that is when I thought it was officially a no. And I got sad and I had my cry. But this time, what was different between this and the no in February was because the band-aid had already been ripped off in a big way back then I didn't feel as devastated and because I think of how I've learned how to come back from things I didn't let myself ruminate in that no instead it was like okay not yet it wasn't a no this is never going to happen it was a no it's not the right time And so I got to cooking a big Punjabi dinner. I made chicken curry and um, I made gajra da sabji, which is just delicious. And I made fresh rotis for the whole family. And initially when I was cooking, it was like frumpy. I was like, I don't know if I'm crying because of the onions or if I'm just actually crying. Um, And then Mitch's dad came in and we just turned it into a really nice evening. And by the end of the night, I recorded that series of videos that you guys would have seen on Instagram of me saying, you know, it's not me. It didn't work out. And feeling, you know, like it's not about if it's going to happen, it's when. And it might take a few years. Like I thought I had more work to do. I thought that this was just a sign that, you know, I mean, this is a big deal. It's Michelle Obama. Like on this, on her tours this last year, like maybe 20 to 30 people have interviewed her and I could be one of them and I'm trying to be one of them and so I have to be my most excellent self in order to get in that chair and so I was ready to put in so much more work to bring this dream to life over the next few years and that's what I said on that video and I truly meant it it was my way of surrendering to what the current answer was and then creating space for whatever was meant to come next now what came next was wild (laughs) so I followed up with Melissa I let her know you know as you noticed I'm very persistent and I'm going to keep being persistent when opportunities come up and I see you know 
where interviews might be happening, I'll just keep checking in and let me know if ever it's too much. Here's my information again. I'm all in on interviewing. This is what I'm most passionate about. I recently launched my podcasts and I hope one day I'll be able to interview Mrs. Obama. And it was very cool because she ended up introducing me the next day um, to the head of comms in her office and she and I had a conversation so that she could become familiar with me because she's the individual who makes the call on who is going to be interviewed or who's going to interview Michelle Obama and I thought okay they are just going to keep me on deck for the future and let's see what happens I'll keep following up we'll go from there well I keep saying the next day the next day the next day but now we're at last Friday so this is Friday the 4th of October the event is Friday the 11th so a week prior or this was Thursday sorry the 3rd of October and I get an email from the individual from the production company and he says do you have a few minutes today and so I grab my phone or sorry I, I put my phone on my desk turn on the sound because I usually have it on silent and I said for sure I'm available and he calls and everything changed they decided to shift the moderator who they had for Ottawa back to Hamilton because they were local to Toronto and Ottawa opened up and of the people who they were considering my incredible friends and champions at the Ottawa Board of Trade made sure that they knew that I was at the top of that list for them and like thank you so much Suling thank you so much Priya Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Chantel, for being champions for me and believing in me and consistently telling them that we need someone local. We need a woman. This She's incredible. Let's make this happen. And so Christian said, do you want this? Would, would you be open to this? And I said, hell yes. And it needed final sign-off from her office and the serendipity of having touched base with her head of comms the day before was wild and so approval came through and Friday morning Friday October 4th I got the 100% okay you will be interviewing Michelle Obama I decided to hold on to the news over the weekend because I just wanted it to be mine it was so wild it's like that's how Mitch and I felt when we got engaged it was like let's just keep this between us for a bit and the people we love And I think that's sometimes the best thing we can do for ourselves when we get great news because you can synthesize it, you can chew on it, you can ask yourself what it means to you, you know, like a few days before I thought this dream was going to take a few years and here it was only taking a few days. That's a big change of pace and we get to be gentle with ourselves and give ourselves grace and just kind of allow, allow things to settle, allow the dust to settle and ask ourselves what what just happened and so I took the weekend to do that celebrated with the people I love most and then on Monday I told all of you guys and your responses and reactions have filled my soul so much and I told you like the nitty-gritty of the story and I actually don't know how much I should or shouldn't have been telling you but I just transparency is who I am I think that if we see the architecture of how these things happen and how long it takes and how while or how long it takes for a seed to be planted and to bloom and blossom like we need to know this we need to share these facts and ways things happen with each other because if we don't then if by doing it it can happen faster for other people for their dreams because they can know or they it can happen with less turmoil because they can know that things take time things are hard to do But if you're persistent, a no can turn into a yes. And persistent in a respectful way, not an annoying way or like an overbearing way. When I emailed Melissa, thank you. She just said, your perseverance, like look what happens from your perseverance. I'm so happy for you. And it's like, yeah, man, this was hard work over time. This was having tough skin, rejection after rejection. But knowing that those words coming from Michelle Obama of this is destiny were true it just was on a different timeline I also think February didn't happen because I hadn't gone all in on myself yet I hadn't declared myself an interviewer I hadn't I was still building core space it wasn't the right time so this for sure was like it's not a it's it's all about the right time it's 
the no then was not no this is never going to happen it was it's not the right time and now is the right time guys it's like 2 30 2 40 how long have I been talking 41 minutes I again I just wanted to give you guys the ins and outs of this I'm so incredibly excited I'm so excited for all of you who are going to be there in the room tomorrow I'm so excited for everyone who's going to be following along online know that this isn't just my win this is our win we did this i wouldn't be here without you i wouldn't this wouldn't matter as much without all of you and we can go for our wildest dreams and we can achieve them with the right strategy the right thought process the right belief in ourselves the courage the confidence the audacity with all of these things together we can go for our dreams and it also takes a village like as soon as I found out the news my friends mobilized around me like crazy people helping me Kim helping me with press and getting things out there Rhaenyra helping with design and making things beautiful as she always does my friends Presna Mina and Aruna helping me with research and question prep because I had to get questions in right away Um, my friend Kenya who's going to be there documentary photographing and social mediaing with me backstage and this has been such a massive dream of hers uh to be there to to document and meet michelle obama as well and like i just want this to be an opportunity to not just make my dreams come true but make the dreams of everyone i love come true as well and so it's beautiful because if going for your dreams is one of the biggest acts of service you can commit Because not only the happier you are, the happier everyone around you is, but also if your dreams come to life, you can unlock the potential in everyone around you. And you can unleash the potential in everyone around you and you can remind the people around you, people around you, what they're also capable of. So one of the biggest acts of service you can do in your life is to go for your biggest dreams and leave nothing on the table. Go all out don't regret a second of it and believe in yourself so fully and it will be the greatest thing you can do for yourself and everyone around you that's the lesson for today go all in on your dreams they will come true it will take time but they will happen i'm gonna leave it there guys i love you so much I'm interviewing Michelle Obama tomorrow, and I can't wait to tell you all about it next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you loved this episode, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. And if you want to follow me, Komal, check me out on Instagram at K-O-M-A-L-M-I-N-H-A-S or the show at Lessons Learned Podcast underscore. And if you have an idea of a lesson that we should dive into on the show, then slide into our DMs and submit there or on the website along with any guests you think I should interview and talk all of the things with. As always, I hope that you make some time for you this week and reflect on the lessons you're learning or have learned and take some time to celebrate all the incredible that is you. Until next time, guys. Bye!